this video we will demo the whole solution from start to end, so basically the everyday of a maintenance. So we start off with a technical structure, then we go to preventive, then we'll do the operations, which is notification work orders. We'll order some parts, go through inventory, create some purchase orders, do some cycle counts, we'll do everything, some time entry. So we start off here, we look at plant maintenance, we look at the technical structure. First thing we want to do, we're going to go look at our technical structure. So this usually is done by the planner. So the planner will get in, click on here, see what's going on with the technical structure. And uh, they look one item at a time. There's a bread oven. There's the mixers. They have their bombs here. Mixer has a bomb. Wild share has a bomb. These have bombs etc. Now from here, since we're in technical structure, we'll see that the bread oven needs a, a bomb. So how do we get a bomb for the bread oven? Well, <coughs> what we do, we'll open a new window. Once again, technical structure. We should create a bomb for the equipment. We will search for it. bread oven, enter, then here you put your parts. So now you need to know what parts to order. So we go here, we'll go IW38, and we're going to see the bread oven, and we're going to see all the parts of the bread oven, or order against the bread oven, ever. So let's see if the bread oven has any parts ever ordered. So bread part bobbin has no parts ever ordered, so that's fine. We will start it from scratch. So go here, we look at all the parts that we have. And I'll explain to you later how this is all done. We'll select all these parts. All of them by conveyor assembly belt are um stocked. Let's go here. This one's an N. You go one, 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 one. Press save. That's done. We go back here, refresh. Bread oven has a bill of materials now. And this one comes with more. That's a materials bomb. So that's that. Now we go back here. What else do we want to do in a technical structure? Well, we looked at this. We want to go create a new equipment. So we look back at our technical structure. And we see that, uh, oh well, there's actually a third mixer. So let's add a third mixer. Create equipment. Press enter. Mixer number three. Location. 2507. Organization. 2507-4340-001. Then you press structure, change install location, 2507, mix, mix, save. So go back here, you press refresh, there's a third mixer now. Now the next thing we want to do, we want to add the bill materials. So once again, we we'll open a new window. We go through our bomb. We create an equipment bomb. We look for it. Execute. Mixer number three. Enter. You put the part in there. We say we want one. You press save. You got your equipment bomb. So we refresh. Mixer three has an equipment bomb. Has an equipment bomb now. Next thing we want to do, since we're still in technical structure, we've created we've created bill materials. We've created equipment. 
And now we're going to look at the list of equipment. We won't create a functional location. It's the same thing as creating an equipment. Go to list of equipment, execute. Here's all your equipment. This equipment here is deleted. This equipment is all installed. And there's equipment here. This is, you're doing nothing with it. So then we look at this and we go, okay, we're going to delete some of this. So this one we're going to delete. And we're going to also delete this one. And we're also going to delete uh, this one. So we enter the equipment. I go equipment, deletion flag set. Save. Next one, we, we press here to change mode. Delete the equipment. Delete. Change mode. Delete the equipment. Delete. We refresh. That's all deleted. The rest is just installed. So we'll install the bread litter. Press change. Structure. Change install location. We go 2507 dash brd save we refresh now it's there this will put in sanitation change mode structure change 2507 san install save we refresh it's there so now what we've done basically we've updated this structure so now full scrubber is in sanitation we also added a bread letter to the bread line. And we have managed the equipment that we have here. So we've deleted some and we installed some. This is still in storage. This, 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 and this. They're still in storage. And so is this. Now you can make it disappear from your list if you like. So what you go do, you go back. You hear where it says... Um, status you pick the delete status so you save it save it save it execute you won't see any to delete it you only see whatever's actually open so that's that. Go back to the main screen. We've done all the transactions here and we've managed the technical structure. We go back to our technical structure. We expand the whole thing. We are happy with it. We have lots of build materials. And uh, we're happy for the location of our equipment. So what we'll do next now is that we're going to go look at the maintenance plans. So go back here, go PM plans. So we'll start off with creating a maintenance plan, PM plan, IP41. You create a plan. You always pick MLF. You go, we'll say a monthly, no, we'll say weekly PM for mixer number three because that's a new equipment we just put one week you go here and you look for your equipment you put star mixer star oops star execute mixer number three enter you see who's going to do the work we'll say Steve will do the work it's PM you put a priority you always have to put a priority these are always mandatory if you fail to put any of these here, you'll get in there in the work order. You won't get in there in the maintenance plan, just in the work order. Then you put your long text, long text basically are your instructions on what to do in the PM plan, and they, they transfer over to the work order. So you open it up, you put your instructions, uh, oil mixer, grease bearings, Check machinery for 
uh, check usage. So that's what we do. You save it. We go here. You put 100% because here basically says how far ahead do you want to look. We want to look ahead three weeks. Start a cycle will be beginning. Beginning Saturday. It's a weekend job. Actually, we'll make it Friday. Go here. You put the sort field. So you look for your sort field, 2507. You go back here. And we press save. Go back here. Now we look at our li list of PM plans. We press execute. We have Mixer 3 is our latest one. So it has all the information. It has a work center. It has long text, priority, and a function location and an equipment. That's good. We're happy. Highlight it. You go to maintenance plans. Mixer 3 is good. It hasn't been started yet as it shows a zero here. So then we go change mode, maintenance, schedule. You press start, enter, save. You refresh, it has been started. You press back, back, back. So let's review. You start off with your technical structure, and then you create prevent to maintenance off of the technical structure. We go back here. Our technical structure consists of build materials, equipment, and function locations. You mainly concentrate on the technical structure here, which is IH01. It shows you everything. And then you add on from there. You add on equipment, function locations. You look at your equipment, and you install and dismantle. And you create your build materials. That's that. That's done. Your PM plans, you start off with creating the plan. Then you look at your list of PM plans. Then you do PM forecasting. So we created a plan. We looked at all our plans. Here's all our plans. All the data's there. We're happy with it. Like I said, highlight it. Go look at the maintenance plans. We're happy with this. This one is missing the call horizon. So what we'll do, we do edit. Go here. Oh, that's what happened. The equipment's been dismantled. So execute. We'll make this for the... Scale number two. Yes. We'll make this also Steve. Hundred percent. Three weeks. This is the VN window. It's the wrong maintenance plan actually. refresh it's all good so actually we'll change this up a little bit it'll be scale number two wait we save So I'm just fixing this. All right, so that's what you do here, PM plans. You create them, list, now you got PM forecasting. Come here, we're gonna do forecasting for, for now until the 8th, December, we go. So go here and here's all our PMs coming up. So this is PM forecasting. You'll see the work orders. And then if it's been completed, I'll show you here. These have not been completed. And these are yet to be created. So if we look at it, today's the 25th. We create for the next seven days. We'll create all these right here. So the next thing we do is go in PM plans. We create the PM work orders. Go here. Halifax, seven days, execute.
creates all these work orders. That's good. Go back to our list. We refresh. All of a sudden, all these have been populated, which is good. Now, that's our technical structure. Now, we go back to PM. PM plans. We're going to look at our work orders. List of work orders preventive. You click on it. All you do is press execute. Heals all your PMs. You sort by status. So these are the brand new ones that just got created. When they just get created, they always have created status. The reason being is because you want the maintenance planner or supervisor to make a decision on whether you're going to do this PM or not. So if they're happy, they press release. They release it. They're all released. Refresh. Everything's there. Uh, next thing you go do the work. So these here look like this one looks like it's done. These look like they're done. So I'm going to put hours. So I'm going to go order, confirmation, collective confirmation. Put the hours. Five, five, eleven. Enter. You're happy. You press save. You press refresh. There's the hours. So you highlight them, and they're done. You press refresh. They're gone from your list. Now we go back to here. Here's the work orders are outstanding for PMs. Refresh. These are the three just got done. And that's how you supervise what's going on. Go back here. We'll leave these open for now. So that concludes PM plans. All that's left is the counters. That's a separate video for counters, which won't be included here. We go here, now we're going to start doing corrective maintenance. So the first thing we got to do is make sure there's work, correct work centers. We're going to pretend we have a brand new worker, 2507. Brand new worker's name is Alwyn. Reference Steve. What I'm doing here when I copy this is because it's, there's quite a few bits of infra financial information that need to be copied over in order to uh, make sure the work center is created correctly. You press save, press back, you go here, change it. Tony, you go here. The only thing that could go wrong is the start and end date. We'll say Alwyn started on the his first day of work was the first of these September, and he's only here on a contract. So Alwyn ends after the 31st. He's not going to be around after that day. So press save. All of a sudden we have Alwyn as a worker. Press back. We look. Now we want to do. We want to create a notification, and we're going to assign our new worker to the work Alwyn. So. To refresh, now we're going to do corrective maintenance. So we have our technical structure, the preventive maintenance. That's what's supposed to be a big chunk of our work. Now we're going to do corrective. That's when things break down. So you create a notification, leads to a work order. Go here, create a notification, and one. Oops, sorry, and one. So that's corrective. You go here, and we're going to say that mixer number three is vibrating. That's fine. We look for mixer number three here. We go mixer number three. There it is. Uh, mixer number three is vibrating. Should check out. Will not be operating. Fixed. 
due to safety hazard. That's that. We're going to put Alwyn as our worker to do this work. Priority is very high. So, we're going to see this broke down. So, that's that. Now we're going to save it. Now we're going to create a couple more corrective. We're going to send them all to Alwyn. Next one, we're going to do N2, which is a maintenance request for something to be done. So we go here, and then we go look at our flock structure. We're going to say we want our scale number one calibrated. So go back to cali calibrate scale number one. So basically, the difference between an N1 and N2 is that N1, something broke down, needs to be fixed immediately. N2 is uh, nice to have, so something that should be done at some point. So we go here and we look for equipment. We go scale, star. We put scale number two. And I go scale number two has not been calibrated in over three months. Needs to be calibrated this within weeks case of audit. You go here, Alan's gonna do this work because Alan's good at doing that. Put hi save it. Next one we're gonna do we're gonna do N three which is a report. So N1 is corrective, N2 is something you wish to have, and N3 is just a report. Uh, here we're going to say the report in this case is that bread line is bit 30. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go here, we're going to look for bread line. Bread. So we're going to go by function location. There we go. This window here tells me, this is in configuration by the way, it tells me there's been 30 notifications created, 15 orders created, 13 breakdown reports, 23 processing days for the breakdown reports, and 14 work orders have been completed, 30 notifications. So this stems from uh, the flock structure, so anything on the flock and below it will be showed here. Uh, bread line does, doesn't look great should keep cleaner for next time. Alwyn's reporting this. This is low priority. And then you just press save. So we've created three notifications. So now we go back to the main thing. Now, if you're a planner, you'll go in here, a list of notifications. You look at everything that's open, press execute. And right away, you see that you have all these notifications open here. So best way to look at this is this way. These NOPR means that they have been processed. So they have a work order. I just changed the way this is laid out. So. These have been looked after, these haven't. So it's very easy. You look at this right away, you see, okay, these, what I have to do here for the list of notifications, I've already looked at these, so I'm gonna check up on them, but right now these are the ones that require my attention immediately. So the three op two options you have are either you create a work order or you delete it. So I'll look at them. First one is a uh, bread line is a bit dirty, has no work order, it's not against an equipment, it's just against a bread line generally, and it was created by Vlad Tapia this time. So then, it's like, you're curious what the notes are. You click here. It shows you the notes. Bread line doesn't look great. Should keep it cleaner next time. Okay. Nice to know. Thank you. I won't create a work order. I just complete it. It's done. We looked at it. Refresh is gone from the list. Next one. Mixer number three is vibrating. No work order. It's mixing area. Vi created it. So you go here and look at the notes. What do you want to do about it? 
Mixing number three is vibrating, should be checked out and will not be operating until fixed due to safety hazard. Okay, I gotta do something about this. So what I'll do, I'll create a work order. Uh, I'll make this a general work order, medium priority. And I'll say that this is a uh, safety. And I'll, I'll give Alwyn two hours to go check this out. And that's it. I'll just save this. Release. Save. Schedule. Save. So refresh has been looked after. Now the last one. Okay. It says calibrate scale number one. Okay. This is actually a general work order. Go here. ZMG1. Very medium. I'll put this as a audit work. So also Alwyn's working on this. It'll take him one hour to do this. Release. Save. Good. I've looked after all my notifications. They're done. So since I looked at them all, now I gotta actually see what's going on with my work orders. So I highlight this, I go environment, and I go to orders. From here, I check out what's going on with my work orders. First thing it shows you the total cost. And it shows you what's happening with them. So first thing I gotta do is print them. None of these have been printed, so what I'll do, I'll highlight the ones I just did. So this, I just brand new, and this. I'm gonna go order, print order. They've been printed, I refresh, all of a sudden they show the printer status right here, PRT. So they've been printed. In case you're curious how the printout looks like, you click here. And it looks like this. This way you print out, it has the work order number. It has the area, so the mixer number three is where is the work's being done in the mixing area. General maintenance, safety, and now when Tony's working on it, this date. And here's some notes. Mixer number three is vibrating. Here's the person who reported it. Vlad Tapi has his phone number. Not operating. So that's how that works. So after we print it out, we're going to go take one or more of these. And we're actually going to create a new notification. It's time for something that's broken. So N1, we're going to say the scale number one is broken. Scale number one is not working. Scale number one digit working. We look for it. We go scale star scale number one enter. Yeah, scale number one is not showing results. Also is allowing items to be weighed properly. Now when we'll do this work, priority is very high. Item is broken down. Save. Go back here. List of our work orders, I mean notifications. We press refresh. There's a new one. We're going to address it right away. It's a corrective. Very high. We're going to say it's a repair. 
we're gonna say it takes Alwyn eight hours to do it a full day's work release save refresh highlight environment orders Then we take this, and we're going to go add some parts to it. So here's the work order, now we're, we're working with it. This is the supervisor, most likely. So if we look at our function location, scale number one has a bill of materials, which is good. We can use the bill of materials here. So what we do, we press list, and you add your bill of materials. That's how you add your parts. I need uh, this type of bearing for this. Yeah. And I need two of these. I need two of these. Press enter. You put 0 050. You actually check for stock. So you have 10 in stock. That's good. Do you have this in stock? You have this in stock as well. That's good. So press this. Press save. What that does, that checks, uh, does ATP, which checks if it's in stock. Let me press save. Press refresh. Now you're going to go print this out. So let's see what it looks like to print out. If we look at it, it looks like this. We go to the second page, it shows the parts we ordered. So we need these parts. We need a conveyor, two conveyor rollers, and roller bearings. Those are the parts we need. It shows you the bin they're in, bin A, bin A, bin A, and that's it. So this one shows you uh, purchase requisition. It's against it. So we go back. We actually print it. Refresh. It's printed now. Now, next item here is that you look at the parts you've ordered. So you go to list of materials because now if we go back if we actually go back we're maintenance so we've done this we've done this we're going to do time entry eventually and we've done this now we actually integrating with inventory because we're ordering parts so go back here 